Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our quick shoot series. Hey everybody, welcome to Playload. This is uh, all my video game pickups for January 2014. And first, a little disclaimer. Uh, this is, you know, January is a smaller month as far as game pickups go, because typically you kind of buy everything in November and December, and then January you just kind of chill. And that's no exception with me either. So I'll just show you this stuff I got, but uh, bear in mind it's not like a crap ton of stuff. Uh, the first thing I got was uh, a 2DS. I did a video on this, well, I sort of did a video. I did a video about ranting on Club Nintendo, and it happened to include a 2DS unboxing unit. Uh, if you guys remember that, I actually got this 2DS plus these two games as a package deal from Walmart all for free, essentially. Um, so, I mean, I still haven't actually opened these games because I'm not sure I'm going to keep them. Um, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't made up my mind on that. So with that being the case, I actually don't own any games for the 2DS. I just have original DS games. Uh, so whatever, you know, I mean, it's a nice little handheld. I mean, I don't particularly enjoy handles all that much, to be perfectly honest with you, because, you know, I have a TV. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, there's nothing against, like, the games or anything. I just haven't picked up any, really. So I'm looking forward to trying this thing out more as time goes on. But for now, I can't give it much of a review other than from a strictly hardware standpoint. And I can tell you that I like the design of it. I mean, a lot of people were bitching about it, but I don't value the 3D feature, like, at all. So it's good for me. So I just wish it had like a nice case for it. Uh, all I have is like the plastic wrap that it came in. So yeah, that's my quick thoughts on that. Uh, moving on, the other thing you guys saw is I got a big box of Japanese Sega Saturn games. I'm just representing it here by one of them. This was uh, Pretty Fighter X, probably the best game in the lot. Um, so I'm not going to go through that whole process because it would take forever to go through all those games again. So if you're curious to all these, I think I picked up like 40 or something Japanese Saturn games. So you can check that video out if you're curious. But uh, now moving on to stuff you haven't seen. I picked up a few Genesis games. I got uh, Sword of the Vermilion, I got Weapon Lord, and Home Alone 2. Uh, I picked up this one because it said Mega Drive on it, which you don't typically see Genesis games that say Mega Drive on them. And you can tell it's Genesis because of the way the back is. So if anybody knows why this would say Mega Drive but actually be a Genesis game, I'd love to know. Uh, this one just caught my eye because... I don't know, it just did, it just caught my eye. And uh, Home Alone 2, because I'm sure it's terrible. And I had the first one. I think I had this when I was a kid, too. This game was absolutely terrible. But these were all really cheap, so... I just said, what the hell. I picked up, uh, what is this? Uh, AH3 Thunder Strike for the Sega CD. It's not very often you pick up a Sega CD game. At least I know I don't. Because, yeah, most of the... You don't see them very often. If you do, they're usually sports titles, so... Yeah, I figured what the hell, I didn't have this one, saw it out and about, and really wasn't expensive, so I picked it up. Um, I don't recall having any particularly enjoyable experience with it, though. I mean, it's just kind of like a mech type of game, even though, yeah, obviously it's a helicopter, but it kind of plays like one of those mech games. So, yeah, it is what it is. Not my, like, not really something I'm going to be hugely into, but it's still pretty cool, especially because it's in really good shape, so, Yeah. Uh, I got The Mask for the Super Nintendo. Now this game, I played this a lot as a kid and I never owned it. This game is like insanely hard. Um, I don't know why, but uh, or maybe I was just terrible at it. But uh, I actually really liked this game and I was glad to finally pick it up. It, it's not a super common game, but it's also not super rare. So I think I picked this up for like 10 bucks. So that was cool to get my hands on finally. Not in like the best shape of all time, but I've seen way worse. For the PS1, I got Metal Gear Solid VR Missions. Uh, this is this was kind of a disappointing release. I think we all kind of... I, I know I remember that being a disappointing release after Metal Gear Solid was huge. This was like the first thing to come out after it, and it was clearly like a quick cash-in. You know, they used the exact same engine they did for Metal Gear Solid 1. Almost like a, a tech demo of Metal Gear Solid 1 in a lot of ways. It was like a puzzle version of the game. I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously it wasn't meant to be like a sequel or anything, but it, it was just... You know, as a kid, when you got you played the first Metal Gear Solid, and then you were told this thing was coming out, you were just expecting something bigger and better, and you were disappointed. But um, yeah, so I finally picked this up, just kind of for the hell of it, just to have it as part of the Metal Gear Solid collection. That's really about it. This is a really, really cheap game now, by the way. Uh, Ghostbusters, the video game for the PS2. Uh, so why did I pick this up? Because I have the Xbox 360 game. For those who don't know, Ghostbusters had a release on like the 360, the PC, the, uh, the PS3, and uh, that game is kind of the next movie. It's like the spiritual, I don't mean a pun there, 
uh, Ghostbusters 3 because they actually hired, you know, the original cast to do the voices. In fact, they wrote it too, which is pretty impressive. Um, so I never saw any point in getting, like, there's a PS2 version, obviously right here, and then a Wii version. I never saw any reason to get those until I found out that the uh, PS2 and the Wii version are actually very different games. Uh, so I thought, oh, well, then I should totally pick that up. And just because I hate the Wii's controls so much, I said, all right, I'll get the PS2 version. So haven't really played it, to be perfectly honest, because uh, I played it all through the 360 one. That game was really cool. Highly recommend it. This one, I don't know yet, but um, if it's anything like that, then yeah, that might be kind of cool, but I guess I'm not really totally sure. I just, I, it's a different game, obviously, so I guess I can't be that much like it, but I don't know, whatever. Hopefully it doesn't suck. Time Splitters, Future Perfect for the Xbox. I thought I had this, and then it turns out I didn't, uh, because I picked up, like, a few months ago, I picked up, like, Time Splitters 2, and I thought, okay, now I've got them all. And then I didn't really realize I didn't actually own Time Splitters Future Perfect. So I went ahead and got that once I saw it. Um, yeah, Time Splitters games are really cheap now, and I think this is kind of up there on the list of series that people really demand have a comeback. Personally, I haven't really sat through and played them all, but now that I have them, at least that option is possible for me. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to eventually doing that. <clears throat> uh, Mad Dash Racing. This was an original Xbox launch title, actually. Um, I had a friend who was, like, totally obsessed with this game, and I, I'm pretty sure he was just convincing himself that it was awesome. Because it's, it's just like a... It's kind of like Sonic R a little bit. You know, you just, you're just you racing, but you're running the entire time, if that makes any sense. Uh, it's probably better, in all honesty. But, um, yeah, so it, it clearly looks like a very early Xbox game, because it is. Uh, I, I could easily believe this was probably headed for the Dreamcast originally, because IDOS was a big Dreamcast supporter. It probably was headed there, and then they just ported it over the Xbox when uh, that didn't pan out. So, yeah, in a way, this was a very late Dreamcast game. Uh, Project Snowblind. Yeah, this was just another random, well, what the hell, I'll pick it up type of games. You know, original Xbox stuff is incredibly cheap right now. Uh, so if you're into the original Xbox, there's no better time than now to strike. Uh, this very much looks like an FPS. I mean, I, I didn't really get too into this. But, um, yeah, that's just what it looks like, so I picked it up. Whatever. Uh, moving on to the Xbox 360. Star Trek. Uh, this game got really, really bad reviews, but I, I bought a bunch from uh, Gamefly recently because buying used games on Gamefly is like the best thing ever because they keep all the cases and everything like in perfect shape. All they ever mail out is those discs. So when you buy them, you get the original case with everything, including like any DLC co uh, code vouchers and anything. So it's always really, really good to buy used games there. I highly recommend it. So they had a big sale again because they always seem to do that. And this one was cheap, so... That was it. That was my entire motivation. Is it a good game? Probably not. Far Cry 3. Now this is supposed to be a very good game. Um, we, I did, we did a video on this a few months ago, uh, Christopher walking through actually. It was pretty fun, um, but I didn't, you know, I had to play that for like work purposes, so I didn't really get to enjoy it to its fullest extent, so it's kind of cool to actually have a copy now that I can, you know, play at my leisure when I have the time. But uh, yeah, also picked that up from Gamefly. Dead Space 3, it's basically the same deal. Gamefly, again, you know, they just they have really good deals on used stuff. And, you know, it comes, see, like, it comes with the limited edition unlocks and on, online pass and all that stuff. It's completely valid. I mean, it was. I redeemed it already, but, yeah. So that's why I highly recommend buying stuff from Gamefly. Uh, although I, I, I do know this game was supposedly massively disappointing, so that's unfortunate. Metro Last Light. Um, this, too, was from Gamefly, and they gave me the limited edition. Now, I could be wrong, but I don't think they were supposed to do that. I mean, is this kind of like Sonic uh, All-Star Racing Transformed or whatever, where every version is labeled limited edition? I never actually saw Metro Last Light, like, on a store shelf. Maybe I just didn't notice it. But I, I don't think they always said limited edition and included all the DLC and stuff, so... Whatever. Either way, this was, like, 4 or $5 from Gamefly, so... I'm looking forward to getting into that. I actually really like the stuff that Deep Silver puts out. They also put out stuff like Saints Row, and yeah, I, I like those guys. I respect them. And they were one of the big people behind, you know, fighting the YouTube content ID war, because they fucking hate that that happened. And I'm right there with them. And uh, then I also got Death Smiles. Now, I have not played this whatsoever, because this literally arrived in the mail 
right before I shot this video. This is currently, at least at the time I make this, is on sale on Amazon for $10. The collector's edition is actually on sale for $15. I did not bother with that because it really just comes with like a faceplate for the original 360 model and I, I, you know, I don't care. I just wanted the game. So this is supposed to be like an insane bullet hell shooter. So with uh, like, you know, Lolita's, gothic Lolita's in it. So yeah, I don't know. That could be pretty cool. Although I wish I was better at those types of games because unfortunately I really suck at them. And finally, the only two things that I got were kind of weird. Uh, I happened upon a couple of Turbo Graphic 16 games, which, you know, if you live in North America, you know how uncommon that is. Uh, they just were in a, you know, a thrift store. So, and they had their little pouch case things here. And so I said, what the hell, I'll give them a good home. And uh, this one's Battle Royale. It's just like a wrestling game. And China Warrior, I think, was like a fighting game. I didn't play them for very long, in all honesty. But, uh, yeah, that was just cool to pick up some TurboGrafx-16 games, because that almost never happens. But, uh, yeah, like I said, that's it. That's It wasn't a big month. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys the things I did get. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all later.